This video is on energy and light equations. So light has a wave-like property as it travels through the air. A light wave has some different parts to it. We have the wave here going along an amount of time. The distance between the middle and the top of a wave is called the amplitude, which is the height of the wave, and that is labeled as an A, capital A. The distance from peak to peak, that's how we measure the wavelength, shown by the symbol lambda. Okay. This is measured in nanometers. Remember that one nanometer, or one meter, has one times ten to the ninth nanometers inside of it. The number of waves that we have, going from here to back up, is considered to here as one wave. So the number of waves that we have per unit time is our frequency, shown here, a little curvy V. The frequency is in units of 1 over seconds, so the number per second, so inverse seconds, or hertz, which is HZ. We can have high frequency, where we have many waves per unit of time, or a low frequency, where we have a less number of waves per unit of time. We have a light spectrum that goes from low frequency to high, fre high frequency. Radio waves are going to be your longest wavelength. They're the waves that travel through the air to give you your radio station. Microwaves, these are the waves that you use in a microwave to cook your food or popcorn. IR stands for infrared. Then we have our visible region. This is in the times 10 to the 9th region. In our visible region, it goes from red with the lowest frequency to violet with the highest frequency. Then, our UV region, followed by X-rays, and then gamma rays. Now, gamma rays penetrate through your body, pass completely through your body, and we'll learn more about these in our nuclear chemistry unit. X-rays, these are the kind of rays, the light waves, that travels through your skin to look at your bone when you go to the doctor to get an X-ray. Okay, so these being our highest frequency to lowest frequency. Light has a unique property to it. The speed of light is always constant at 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. All light has the same speed. You notice that as the wavelength decreases, our frequency increases. So as our waves start to get closer and closer and closer together, that means that I'm able to have more waves per unit of time. So wavelength and frequency have an inverse relationship. Our wavelength multiplied times our frequency is equal to our speed of light. We abbreviate the speed of light as the lowercase letter c, Again, 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. We can now write an equation for the speed of light. Speed of light is equal to wavelength times frequency, or lambda times nu. Okay. So to do light equations, we just use our equation here for light. An example problem is what is the frequency of light if light has a wavelength equal to 450 nanometers, knowing that our speed of light is 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Notice that our light is in meters per second, but our wavelength is in nanometers. Now we cannot compare meters to nanometers, we need to convert. It's easiest to convert our 450 nanometers to meters as opposed to converting this number to nanometers. So we start by doing that, converting our 450 nanometers, using our unit cancellation, 1 times 10 to the 9th nanometer per meter, which gives me 450 times 10 to the negative 9th meters. Then I arrange my equation to solve for frequency, dividing both sides by lambda. So I get frequency is equal to speed of light over lambda, which is my wavelength. I plug in my variables that I know. My speed of light is 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. My wavelength is 450 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. When I plug this into my calculator, I get a frequency of 6.66 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds, or hertz. This 
video is an addition to the video on light. Energy is another property that is directly related to light. Energy is measured in the units of joules, which are a capital J. Energy is equal to Planck's constant, which is the letter H, times the frequency of light, frequency being shown by the Greek letter nu. H is Planck's constant. This is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. So the units are joules times seconds, like this. We can now do problems where we're looking for the energy associated with a particular wavelength of light. So an example question is, what is the energy of light with a wavelength of 450 nanometers? Now our equation for energy we cannot solve directly from wavelength. We have to go back to our equation for the speed of light, where we can then solve for our frequency from our wavelength. So first we need to do is convert our wavelength to frequency via our speed of light equation, C equals lambda times nu. Now, 450 nanometers, we know, is 450 times 10 to the negative 9 meters, as we previously uh, converted. So I know my wavelength is 450 times 10 to the negative 9 meters, and my speed of light is 2.998 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Again, when I plug this in my calculator, just like before, I get 6.66 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. Now I have my frequency, and I can now plug it into my energy equation to solve for energy. Energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency, where we then solve. We have Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds times my frequency of 6.66 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. When I multiply the two of them together, notice that I add my exponents together, and I get 4.41 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. I know this is at least a good answer because my, when I add my exponents together, negative 34 plus 14 is approximately 20, um, but moving the decimals around, I get negative 19, so I know that I've plugged it in correctly. So now go ahead and try to find the energy of light with a wavelength that yields of 500 nanometers. Remember first that we need to go from our wavelengths to frequency, and then once we know our frequency, then we can use our equation of E equals H times nu.